Okay, so we've covered, you know, starting with data, ggplot, add the geometric object, add the mappings, which typically go inside the ggplot function, but can go inside the ggplot object, always specified by the AES function to specify that, you know, this is a mapping and not a fixed value. And now that we've covered that, let's talk about positioning for a moment. So most of the time, you don't need to specify a position. Like if you wanted a scatter plot, you could just say that you want a geom point and you would get a scatter plot. Occasionally though, it's beneficial to change the default positioning in order to make a relationship more obvious. In the example of geom point, we might want to use position equals jitter to bring out the difference uh, in the points or the minimize the overlap. And so we can specify the position inside the geom point function which will then modify uh, how the geom point function plots the points. And what position equals jitter is doing is randomly shifting the position of the points in both the x and y axis. And since this is such a commonly performed operation, there's actually a geometric object called geom jitter, which is basically a shortcut for doing this. In terms of the bar chart, uh, you might remember that we kind of had a couple of different types of bar charts. The default bar chart is has a position equal stack. So you don't have to specify it. That's just the default position anytime you use geom bar um, when, when you've mapped fill uh, to a variable. So if you map fill to the uh, sex variable um, and you've got a stacked bar chart where region is on the x-axis, you basically get the plot on the bottom left. However, as we mentioned earlier, this is not a great way to figure out, you know, where are the most men and where are the most women? Because the red line for women doesn't start till where the blue uh, line for uh, men ends, such that it's hard to make, it's easy to make comparisons uh, for men across the different regions hard to make those comparisons for women. So we can change the position to dodge in order to see those differences more clearly. So position equals dodge is basically telling the, uh, the bars in the bar chart to dodge one another and go to the side. And it gives us this nice side-by-side -side bar chart. Alternatively, we might want to maximize uh, or make all the bars equal in length such that we can really use the differences in uh, that secondary fill variable, which here is sex, to be able to compare proportions of sex across different regions. And so we don't have to you know, do any kind of manipulation of our data in dplyr to get to this. We can just change the position to fill. Um, and that will basically bring out this plot, which helps us compare um, proportions across categories. Once we've got all those things done, um, what we might want to th then do is add some labels to clarify what the title of the, of the plot is and what some of the X and Y axes are. So remember to create this simplistic you know, chart on the top right, we start with uh, patients, we make a GG plot and map region to the X axis, and then we add a geom bar and we're done. To make this chart at the bottom right, which has a title and has some nicer looking um, labels for the X and Y axis, we still do all the same things. And we add this thing called labs, which stands for labels. And here we can specify the title, we can specify what we want on the X axis and what we want on the Y axis. Now I want you to note two things about this. One is that we did not use the AES function inside of labs. Because we're not mapping title to a variable, we're actually giving it a fixed value. So there's pretty much almost no situation I can think of where you'd want to add an AES function inside of labs. The other thing to note is that we actually never mapped anything to the y-axis when we did our mappings in the ggplot, but we did label the y-axis with number of people in the labs function. 
So let's cover these one by one. Why did we not need to set the count to be the y-axis? If we were doing this in dplyr, we would have had to use group by and summarize or the count verb to be able to actually get the count. It turns out that for the geom bar uh, geometric object, it automatically counts the rows as part of what it does. So um, you don't actually need to map the count to anything. You don't have to calculate the count ahead of time even. As long as you know what it is that the variable of interest is, in this case region, geom bar will automatically count it for you. Uh, and then you're still able to access the Y uh, axis for the purpose of setting a label. But, but if you specify a Y axis, uh, you know, a mapping for Y inside of ggplot and then use geom bar, you'll actually get an error because geom bar does not expect to see a Y uh, value. Now, if you'd actually calculated um, the count in dplyr, then instead of using geom bar, this is where you would use geom call with uh, underscore col. And in a geom call, it knows that it wants both the x uh, variable and the y variable. And that y variable could be the count. It could be any other number that you give it. But geom call is basically a shortcut for a geom bar that uh, wants you to supply the actual count as opposed to calculating it by itself. Facets are a really good way to kind of stratify your analysis by another variable. In terms of comparing this to dplyr, I think of facets as being very similar to a group by function because they're effectively letting you carry out your analysis separately by the facet. Almost like how if you do group by summarize, the summarize function happens separately for each group. So let's look at these two different plots and try to compare them side by side. So if you wanted to figure out how the population of each region differs by sex, in the case of a bar chart, we actually could use position equals dodge um, in order to bring out this difference such that we could make this comparison. So if we were to do that, we would start with patients, make a ggplot, map region to x and sex to fill. And then we would add a geom bar and specify the position equals dodge, which would give us the plot on the top right. If we wanted instead to have separate plots for men and women, it wouldn't be that much different of code. We would start off with patients. We would add a ggplot. And we would only need to map region to x. We wouldn't need to map um, sex to the fill aesthetic, although we could, in which case the two resulting plots would have separately colored bars. But it's not required. Then we would add geom bar. And then we would add facet wrap. And facet wrap is something I typically add uh, towards the end of my ggplot because it's, it's a way of, you know, taking the existing analysis that I've already done and just faceting it by a third variable. And in this case, it's only a second variable and that second variable is sex. One thing to note here is that when you use facet wrap, you have to add a tilde before the variable. Um, I won't fully get into why during this talk, but just remember that I told you, if you're using facets, you've got to remember that there's a tilde involved and you'll come back to this slide or to the online documentation to figure out where that tilde needs to go. So while it's true that we could have used position equals dodge to handle the situation in a bar chart, there's no equivalent to position equals dodge, really, when it comes to a scatter plot. Sure, we could color the points separately for men and women if we wanted to look at the relationship between uh, weight and systolic blood pressure separately for men and women. But because there's so much overlap in the points, it actually becomes hard to appreciate whether the relationship between weight and systolic blood pressure is the same or similar for men and women. 
So here it makes a lot more sense to try to have two side-by-side -side plots where one plot is for men and one plot is for women. So how would we create that plot on the top right where we had different colors? So we would start with patience, then we would uh, make a GG plot, and inside of the aesthetic function or AES, we would map weight to the x-axis, systolic blood pressure to the y-axis, and sex to the color aesthetic. Remember, this is a scatter plot, so you want to use color rather than fill. And then we would add G on point, and it would give us this plot on the top right. If we wanted to get this plot on the bottom right, the code is fairly similar. We start with patience, then we make a GG plot, and we map weight to X and systolic blood pressure to Y. Again, we could have mapped sex to the color aesthetic, but it's not required because the points are not going to be overlapping. But it would have been, it would have worked fine had we done it, in which case the points for women and the points for men would have been different colors. Then we add geom point. And finally, we end with uh, setting a facet uh, of sex. And what this is saying, just like a group by, it's saying, give me separate plots for men and women. And one difference between um, group by and facet wrap is that for group by, you always have to do, do group by first before you can do a summarize or a mutate for that grouping to take effect. With this addition, uh, the order actually does not matter as much. But typically, I tend to add facets at the end because usually I'm taking a unadjusted, unstratified analysis and stratifying it to evaluate for the effect of confounding. So I'm typically adding the facet at the very end after I've already done my kind of more naive analysis. And just remember what I mentioned about the tilde. When you use facets, you've got to add a tilde before the variable, but always feel free to look it up. Just remember that there's something unusual and you can't just write the name of the variable there.